this is not a step too far. This is reality. Saying that this is too far, I don't believe it, I live on a globe, and not being able to come up with a single reason why you believe this cultish belief, um, that's a religion. Sorry. <laughs> Dave, I'm not going to argue with you, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. You can't I've, argue with me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to argue you, with I, you. I, don't argue. I, I, I want to give you three bitcoins. Give me one reason that you think you live on a globe. Just one. Can you give me one before we go? Just one. I just need one. Come one on. One good reason. Well, one good. Well, no, one reason that you, that the earth is a globe. Just one. Please don't say pick. The, the Batley ga- Grammar School teacher as well. And, and the, as I said, like, hope not hate had an article about it. I won't share it but you could see the glee and people need to waken up to the viciousness of the enemy that that we actually face james thank you so much for coming on okay thank you for having me Goodbye. good night james thank you so everybody please um visit the 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 website there and um yeah we we'll, we'll certainly keep spreading the the word there um moving on now because we have our other guest who's coming and he is the man, the myth, and the legend, Flat Earth Dave. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing all right. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Very, very, very good. That's a lovely, a lovely crisp audio you've got going on there, Dave. I, you guys are coming. I'm hearing a little static on your end. Is that my equipment, or is it something going on with you? I was worried about it. Well, no? it was my colleague James was a wee bit static. Okay. Um, he, well, my friend, he was just on, but he's he's gone off. Let, let, I, I don't it. know if you I don't know if you were listening to what the, the the previous show was, James. But a guy in Britain has just been sentenced to two and a half years in prison for and what well, uh, hosting a, a radio podcast. Is it a true story? Because I know they put out the, lots of fake stories like no, that. Is the, it true? The, this, this is true. Yeah, a hundred percent true. He's, he's a guy called James Oldchurch. And he 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 is what you would maybe call an ethno nationalist. So he talks about you you could argue some controversial subjects, um, nationalism, whiteness, issues around ethnicity. But he's been jailed for two and a half years. Wow. You know, and 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 that's this this country. Whereabouts in the world are you, Dave? I'm in uh, Connecticut, right near New York City, unfortunately, but um. I'm on the East Coast in in the USA. Um, because thankfully, right now, I mean, you you guys don't have any hate speech laws, do you? You're, is it the which amendment is it? Is it the First Amendment covers First your right amendment. to free speech? Yeah, but uh, you know they're trying to take everything away. They're they they try everything, and unfortunately, a lot of the sheeple I call them um, just <laughs> agree. They don't realize that we have a true power, and that's what our conversations going to going to talk to to uh, be about today. Because with all this crazy shit. Excuse my language. Sorry. It's all this, Sweden's fine. Sweden's fine. All this crazy stuff in the going on in the world. What does the shape of the Earth matter? Why are we talking about flat Earth? There's insanity going on, and it's too much to mention. And uh, the reason uh, I want to talk about this is because this is the reason that they're getting away with it. You know, it's uh, it's it's not knowing where we are, who we are, or the true power that we have is how they get away with all the insanity. Can I make one request of you? Can you make our pictures um, full aspect ratio instead of half and half? Because when I show stuff, it's going to be over here, and you're not going to be able to say, there you go. You're the best. I love hosts <laughs> that are just, just know what they're doing. <laughs> Thank you so there we much. Go. There we go. No, that's that's absolutely perfect. And Dave, we at UNN, and, and I thank you so much for coming on and, and Galahad and, and giving up your time. We are a free speech channel. We believe that everything and anything should be opened to be questioned about debate and dialogue because I believe in a civilized society where we respect other views, we respect other opinions and don't behave the way in which the mainstream media does, which is to laugh at people, to mock and to lie and and smear them. Even... The absurdity of the idea of the earth being flat. I mean, free speech is free speech, but even entertaining flat earth, right? Isn't that what some people think? Like, why are you even entertaining this? Because there's certain things that we know for thousands of years, okay? But the truth is, that's what I said. I I wouldn't look at a single flat earth video. I wouldn't look at anything. 
And then finally, I was forced to look, and I went in with a closed mind, not like you, an open mind willing to listen. I went in with a closed mind, tried to disprove Flat Earth, prove the globe, and be done with it, okay? And my entire life has been turned upside down. Luckily, I'm on top of a flat level plane. Um, and uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So for those of you listening, let me just throw something out there. If you're ready to tune out, don't tune out. I'm offering three Bitcoins for one globe proof. When I'm done, all I need is one globe proof from anybody, and you win three Bitcoins. You don't know how much that is. That's like $90,000. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. So t t tell us when you started. Well, give us a bit of a background about yourself, Dave. And you told us you're in, you're in Connecticut. It's a nice part of the world, isn't it, there? When, when did you – give give us a bit of background about you then. Well, I mean, going way back, you know, I was uh, I was born in uh, in Fairfield County, which is literally the you know the 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 nicest part of the East Coast. Yeah, uh, some is. some will argue, and um, I've lived here my whole life. I went to college. I went into corporate America. I left corporate America, started my own business, uh, super successful in that. And then with my truth seeking podcast and and business and seeing what was going on in the world, I made a decision to walk away from the American dream. I had it all. I was making more money than I ever thought I'd make. I was my own boss. I, um, you know, had tons of free time and I walked away from it all to talk to people like you about this topic. You know why? Because it needs to be talked about. It is the key to our freedom. OK, they have us living on their fake map, using their fake money, and that's how they control us. Once you see this, you cannot unsee it. And people are like, oh, Flat Earth is dying. You know, in uh, 2017, uh, you know, Flat Earth searches have gone down to almost nothing. That's because they changed the algorithm in 2017. Um, flat Earth searching. You, you know what? Remember on YouTube, you used to search for something and tell you how many they, results they ban, there were? They banned Flat Earth, didn't they, on YouTube? Didn't they, well, they, no, no, they, they, they didn't it. ban it. They didn't ban it. They, it's still there. It just won't come up. If you search Flat Earth, okay. Flat Earth Horizons, Flat Earth Sunset, Flat Earth Time Zones, whatever, it'll come up with the same hit pieces, you know, the ones they want you to see, right? They, you won't find the real videos, the real ones, right? They'll let you make up your mind for yourself. But my point I was trying to make, Flat Earth was a top search term, and it beat, uh, in 2017, it beat President Trump, which was the number one search term on YouTube. And uh, as soon as Flat Earth beat it, you know, beat all of the other searches, they removed the scoreboard. They didn't want people knowing how many people are looking for Flat Earth. And then they hid the results. Basically, they're lying about the results. I'm here today not to convince anyone the Earth is flat. I'm here today to show you it's not a globe and to show you where you can go verify it yourself. Do not believe anything I say. Go verify it yourself. That's what I want to show you. So um, when people think flat earth, they think this. This is what, you know, you Google flat earth, this is what comes up. This image is from the Flat Earth Society. You probably heard that because President Obama talks about the Flat Earth Society at least a half a dozen times during his uh, presidential speeches. They're always mentioning the Flat Earth Society. You know why? They want you to go there because it's ridiculous. It's a government-run disinformation site that will make you laugh at flat earth and never look at it again, Right nonsense nobody thinks this is flat earth we're not a disc floating in heliocentric impossible space okay so if we're not if we're not a disc in space you know what are we you know people like you know all the other planets are around what are the only flat planet you know i know everything <laughs> you're gonna say because i said them all like why are the other planets around why don't people fall off the edge wouldn't cats push everything off the edge i could drink water in an airplane you know i know everything because i was programmed to say the same things but it's not until you look, you know, and as you said a while ago, you know, the mainstream media, they're pushing this nonsense. CNN, John Avalon, right? This is what they want you to believe the flat earth is a disc, you know, turn up, you know, with roots floating in space. Nonsense. Now, this is a good idea, but the white line is just a border of this model here. It goes beyond that. So if, if that's not flat earth, um, what is it? So, um, I'm trying to pull up something. Where's Antarctica? Oh, here we go. So we're told that Antarctica is a continent on the bottom of the Earth. Okay, and when you when you go when you go to um, Google uh, images of Antarctica from space or high altitude images, you get this. These are all cartoons. Okay, two places in the world that you can't see explore um, freely, physically or virtually are Antarctica and. The Arctic, okay, the North Pole and the South Pole, what's going on there? I can show you that in a little bit. So if that's not what Antarctica is, what is it, okay? So this is what I call the Antarctic Basin. They tell us that, that Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. 
Okay. Well, think about a pond or a lake. What holds the water in? Large bodies of water at rest lie flat. What holds the water together? It needs a container. Well, the land that's higher than the water. That's what holds it in. Antarctica is the highest continent on Earth. Most, pe- most people don't know that. When you get to Antarctica, it's usually 200 feet above the surface of the water. There are places where there's you know, a sloped up um, shoreline, but most of it has what they call the ice wall. It's not a wall like the Game of Thrones. It's just a shoreline with a plateau much higher than the water. It's the edge of our world pond. Okay? So let me, uh, let me, let me show you what I, what I mean on how they hide this world. So here's the question. This pink line here is 60 degrees south. No one is allowed to go explore beyond this line. And it's guarded, and I'll show you how it's guarded. Um, um, no one's allowed to go across that without being intercepted by military. And there's eight military bases evenly spaced around um, that won't let anyone go beyond there. If you want to go there, you know, spend fifteen, twenty, seventy thousand dollars to go for three days. They'll take you to this little peninsula here, bigger than many countries, and they'll show you some penguins and some ice, and then they'll kick you out. That's it. They won't let you go out here. Okay. Well, what what could be out there, right? And I'll I'll I'll, I'll throw it back to you in in just in a second. So this is Antarctica. All right, this is what they tell us Antarctica is. And they have all these mountain ranges, and they call them Dome A, Dome B, Dome C. Why are they calling them Dome? It's interesting. Well, people are like, well, mountains are called domes. No, they're calling them domes, right? So this is actually the shoreline of Antarctica. What do I mean by that? Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. So we go. So imagine this. We have a map of the world. This is our map. And we cut out the United States, part of Mexico, and part of South America. Okay? And then we erase the rest of the map. And then in Photoshop, we wrap it around a sphere and we say, this is the whole world. And you're not allowed to explore this white dot that we'll call Antarctica. This is the whole world. That's all there is. Okay? So now what if, what if the world was set up a little different? This is a little advanced. I know I'm jumping right into this. What if all of these little circles were ponds occupying a piece of the plane that we live on, a piece of the extended plane, a planet, if you will, okay, a piece of the plane. And let's say we lived in the center of this pond right here, okay? So we live here with our small local sun. Here's, here's South America, United States, right? They cut it out. They wrapped it around a sphere, and they said, this is all that there is. You're not allowed to explore south, which is this white area. And that's it. They just put your mind in a prison. And when your mind is in a prison and you don't know where you live, you don't know the true power that you have, you don't know that there's more other lands, maybe lands with less tyranny that you might want to move out to, um, then you are a prison in what I call the heliocentric matrix. You must have questions <laughs> by now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's your, yeah. your, 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 it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, we, we have a lot of questions, um, with the, the, the audience and they're okay. watching it. But I think, I think we'll probably wait till the end, um, to, to, to ask these questions. Okay. Look, let me, it's, let me throw out, cause I, I know some of the questions. Let me go through a bunch of other points and then, um, if yeah, you see an interesting going, question, keep going, in, keep interrupt going. Interrupt me and, and bring it. People say, um, well, what, what about circumnavigation? You know, uh, we, we, we can go, I can leave uh, the UK, I can head east, I go around China, and then I'm back to where I started from, you know, go through America, and I'm back. I've circumnavigated. Well, that's not, that's how, that's not, that's no different than on a globe. On a flat earth, we have our magnetic north at the center. So I have a magnet right here. And here's a compass, and the compass needle is pointing to the north. And I'm trying to push this compass, plane, boat, whatever you want to call it, west. And I have to keep turning to maintain a compass heading of west. Think about that, right? The compass is pointing towards the center. And here's a little uh, experiment you can do. Think about this. A lot of people short circuit on this. It's really easy, but you weren't taught to think this way. The North Pole on the globe doesn't move. Everybody could agree with that. The North Pole is essentially at the North Pole. Maybe people think that the magnetic North Pole moves a little bit, whatever. The North Pole doesn't move. So go out in your yard. Pick a tree and say, that's the magnetic North Pole. Tie a rope to that tree, stretch it out about 20 feet, and hold on to that rope tight, okay? That line is pointing north. So if you pointed your hand straight at 90 degrees to that line, that would be east or west, okay? So if I'm going like this, that would be east, okay? Now try to walk east, holding on to that line, keeping that 90 degrees, and you're going to walk in a big circle and come right back to where you started from. If you let go of the rope... 
and and just kept going straight, your back is now to the tree, so you're actually going south. So here I am going west, and I come right back to where I started from. This is the same on a globe and on flat Earth. It doesn't prove either. Now, if I want to go south, which is every – oh, no. If I want a dead reckon, so now I'm going to I'm gonna say, okay, that's west, and I'm going to just follow that stick. I just as I said before, look, the compass is pointing towards the north. I'm heading south. Every straight line is south because every straight line will take you to Antarctica, okay? And now if I want to go south, right, away from the center, I'll go south, and on a globe, I should magically pop up over here. If I went south from Santiago, Chile, I should pop up in uh, Australia or New Zealand, either way. Um, but no, nobody has ever circumnavigated south. Wait a minute. Some royal guy did it, you know, and didn't document any of it. And he's been exposed for lying about expeditions and faking accidents. But he did it. OK, nobody's done it. Right. And I just went there. I went north, 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 and then past the North Pole. I'm heading south. Every straight line becomes south. So there there is um, circumnavigation. Um, and let's talk about seasons and then maybe we'll take a question. How's that sound? Brilliant. Well, one of the things I'm interested in, Dave, is okay. Who, who from history then do you think was was accurate? Because you know, I think for 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 most of history, people did think the world was was it was it Galileo that first said the world was was round, or was it um, was there was there others as well? I mean, what what what's your take on it from history? Who? So we what, got what we were got, the theories in history? Pythagoras, we got Copernicus, Galileo, we got Kepler, um, we got Newton. I don't know if any of those guys even existed. The, the the we have we know very little about our history, and it's all taught to us by the victors. Okay, the victors of this world know, excuse me, know the true history, and um, these are all placed in here. Now you know the story of Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows, right? Mm-hmm. Aristophanes, are you familiar with the story? I know, I know the story. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. so so that's one that they really, really um, banged. You know, really pushed into everyone's um, psyche, especially with the show Cosmos back in the eighties. Right, Carl Sagan's there. Look, you know, we can have these two towers, and the you know, on a flat Earth, they would, would they would have no shadow at the same time, but only when you bend the Earth and then do the math of the how long the shadow is, right? And you could figure out the shape of the Earth. Well, that would be true if the Earth was a globe, but it doesn't. It, it's not how the Earth is, right? The sticks and shadows works perfectly on a flat Earth, right? On a flat Earth, we have a small local sun, right? By the way, Aristophanes, why did he think the sun rays come in parallel unless he was told that and to ignore his physical observations of crepuscular rays? No one's ever seen rays come in parallel. They always come in crepuscular, do a little geometry. Where's the sun? Hmm, doesn't look that high to me. Okay. But on a flat earth, here's Aristophanes. And then here's his buddy. And it's got a shadow, right? You can do this. Get two beer bottles, two lighters, whatever. Stick them up and hold a light over one of them. One of them's going to have a shadow. One of them's not. Do the same math that Aristophanes did. And you can figure out the sphericity of your floor or desktop. Okay. It's math is not reality if you put false data into it. And the other thing is back when Aristophanes and 2000 years ago, they believed in a geocentric Earth, okay, which means that the Earth is at the center. So, for the sun rays to be parallel, you have to do, you have to believe in what we call an infinitely far sun, ninety three million miles, right? So, infinitely far means it's so far away that the rays would seem parallel, right? But how do you have a tiny little Earth with an infinitely far sun that orbits the Earth? Makes no sense. So, they want their cake and eat it too. If you actually look at all of the nonsense that they use to prove the globe. None of it makes any sense. And the more of it that you put together, the less effective, the more ridiculous it becomes. Once you see this, you're going to kick yourself in the rear going, how did I ever fall for this? Okay. How did I ever fall for this? So that that's, um, I hope I answered your question. I kind of went off a little sideways there. Um, let me, let me just talk about seasons and then, um, you know, and anybody listening, please, you know, type your questions, please write, write them down. I want the hard questions. Ask me the hard questions. And guess what? I don't have all the answers, but I do know a lot. All right. So let me show you. Oops. Why isn't that showing? Of course, it's not going to show because, wow, I wanted to show you something and, oh, there we go. There it is. Yay. Okay. So 
This is my app. It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Can you see this? I can make a, yep. Let me make it a little yep. bigger. Yep. Right, okay. Yep. Yep. okay, so you got two yellow lines. The outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. The inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. Now, the sun is getting close to the Tropic of Cancer. It migrates in for six months and out for six months. Let me just jump it forward to June. So June, it's over the Tropic of Cancer. That's, you're in uh, the UK, right? Yeah. Okay. So in the summer, the sun is closer to us, right? It's coming right over the UK right here. It's uh, over, well, over here, okay? Um, it's, uh, the sun comes closer, and that's why it's warmer. It's closer because it's higher in the sky because it, it's closer. Think of a streetlight. When you're under a streetlight, that's your summer sun, and the one down the road is your winter sun farther away, lower in the sky, right? And then six months later, why, you know, we're having our, 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 our summer right now. It's hot in Florida hot in Mexico because the sun's right over it. But six months later, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sun moves out to the Tropic of Capricorn and Australia has their summer because the sun came closer to them, closer, higher, warmer, okay? The whole idea of the of the earth being tilted, uh, causing the seasons is ridiculous because if that was true, in June at sunrise, it should be arctically closed. The sun is three and a half million miles farther in June than it is in December, and it's up to, it's on the horizon, the farthest tilt it could be. But I could feel in June, I could feel the heat of the sun at sunrise. In December, here in Connecticut, in the north, um, at noon on uh, on December twenty first, the coldest, you know, the farthest away the sun could be, the worst the tilt. Um, at noon, I can't even feel the sun with a much more direct angle. So it's a lot to take in. Uh, if you want to so, learn about so- flat Earth. Flat Earth, just go to flatearthdave.com. Tons of free oh, information oh. there. My app is there. All, all sorts of stuff. All right, go ahead. So are are we, as, as there space, as there space? So to prove that the Earth is flat, we do not need to go beyond 60 degrees south where we're not allowed to go. And we do not need to go to space, alleged space, where we're not allowed to go also. And we're just a whole bunch of Freemasons are lying to us. Is there space? I think space is water. I don't think anyone ever has gone higher than about 63 miles, okay? That's not – I don't even think that's low Earth orbit. The the whole thing, well, what about the ISS? I've seen that. All of this stuff doesn't happen in one hour. There's so much information. When you look at the ISS, the light – I've seen the light go by. Get the ISS tracker. You'll see it. It doesn't make sense. Why is it so bright? Why is it so big? How come I could see it for eight minutes when in eight minutes it should be 3,000 miles away from me? How can I still see something the size of a football field at 3,000 miles? Why is the light as bright as the sun reflecting off into my eyes all the time and everyone else's eyes across the land? That doesn't make sense. That's not how reflection works. So what what, what am I looking at? What am I looking at then? When I look up at the sky at night, what is it I'm seeing? What the, the as far as the space station, the sun, the moon, the stars? Which one? The the stars, the moon. What what am I looking at? Yeah. So so the first thing is um, everyone's you know things. Well, everything's round, right? Everything becomes round in the distance. For example, let me show you this. Um, in the in the distance, everything looks round. So we look. Oops, that's not what I want to show you. Um, where is it? Ah, there it is. Hold on one second. Okay, here we go. So in the distance, I could tell you this is the sun or the moon rising. Okay, looks right. Looks kind of round, right? But in the distance, um, it's not really round. Let me just jump forward and you see it's a train and that's what it looks like. So <laughs> it could be, it could be any shape. It'll look round in the distance. It's the way our eyes work. It brings everything, everything together. So when you look up, you can't make any claims about something unless you know how far it is or you know how big it is. And if you don't know either one, you can't say anything other than than it's a um, it's a light in the sky. But when we look up at stars, you know our optics have outgrown their lies. This is the star Sirius. Okay, with our super zoom cameras now, we can uh, we can see amazing things okay this is star serious does that look like a burning ball of hydrogen you know that has gravity that's trillions and trillions and trillions of miles away right they tell us that the sun and the moon check this out the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon and 400 times farther that's why they look like the same size 
or maybe they're just the same size, right? And then we have an eclipse where they line up perfectly, like two quarters, okay? What are the odds of that happening? The odds of that are so infinitesimally small um, in this random heliocentric universe uh, that I don't even think they could be calculated. But here's the problem. There's eclipses every year. And every 18 years, the entire pattern of eclipses repeats again like a fine watch, okay? Like a finely tuned watch. How is everything so perfect? And it's because it's not a random explosion of star, of, you know, of gases. And I mean, the whole idea of the universe, nothing exploded, created everything. And then all the rocks turned into round balls and all the gases fell in upon themselves, turned into nuclear furnaces. And then they all had all this gravity and it held on to everything and created this perfect system where we can predict where everything's going to be for thousands of years. Wrong. It doesn't work that way. You know, we, if you so so it, so based on you on, on on your understanding, then what yeah. what is it we're looking at? What 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 are these things we're looking at in the sky? Then based on your on uh, your analysis, From my so my my analysis, me personally, not every flat earther again because we don't know. I think stars are part of this Earth system. I think they are here within the Earth system. I think they're sentient. I think that there's consciousness. Maybe that's where our souls live. Maybe stars are souls. Maybe all of the wandering stars, which they now call planets, are um, some sort of gods because they're all named after gods. Why are they all named after gods? Okay. Um, and, and, you know, the movement of these planets, I used to laugh at astrology. So stupid, right? You know, astronomy is the real science. Astronomy is pure pseudoscience. It could be real if it was real, but it's not. It's just a bunch of pseudoscience, right? So, you know, when how could Mars being in retrograde affect my life? It can't even affect the tide. You know, it doesn't even have enough gravity. But then when you realize it, like, we couldn't possibly even see Mars. Think about this. Think about this. Sizing and scaling, you know, they, they, te- they tell us that, you know, if something's 400 times bigger and 400 times farther, it'll look the same size. Great. So now we have that. They tell us the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay. 93 million miles away. It's the size of a coin held at arm's length. If I brought it a mile over your head, the, the sun, the heliocentric sun, it would fill the entire sky, horizon to horizon. It's so big. You know, it's a big yoga ball and you're a BB, right? And it's just literally right over you. You look up, the whole sky would be the sun moving 93 million miles away. And it's the size of a coin held at arm's length. Okay. If I doubled the distance, how much smaller would it get? Do you know? <laughs> no, no, don't ask me. No. Well, a lot Tell of people me. say half. But the truth is it gets a quarter of the size, okay? okay? It's called the inverse square law. So if I moved it, um, so the sun is eight light minutes away. 93 million miles is eight light minutes. So the distance light travels in eight minutes. That's what they tell us. So, so at 16 light minutes, it's um, a quarter of the size of a coin. And then at 32 light minutes, you know, twice as far again, doubling that distance, it's a 64th of the size of a coin. It's getting pretty small. It's about the size of a star now. And then if we doubled it again, that's about a light hour. It's it's uh, it's so friggin' small, I don't think you can see it. But let's be really safe. Make it 24 times farther than that, okay? 24 times farther than that, that's one light day. At one light day, it's scientifically provable that you can't see the sun. So while we can't move the sun, but what can we use um, to use that math that I just did? They tell us Polaris, which you and I can see every night, year-round, in the north, right? Um, it's a bright star in the sky. It's not the brightest, but it's bright. You can see it with your naked eye. They tell us it's about 46 times bigger than Polaris. Let's make it 48 times bigger, okay? If I made Polaris 48 light days away, okay, right? That's 48 times farther than we couldn't see the sun. It would be the same size. Therefore, we couldn't see Polaris at 48 light days away. Let's round it up to a year. Just give the globe every benefit possible. At a light year away, it is Beyond even question, not a theory, it's scientifically provable that it's infinitesimally too small to see at a light year away. They tell us Polaris is 433 light years away. Okay? Your mind should short circuit right now and say, I can't follow these numbers. Somebody in a lab coat that lies for a living who's a failed comedian, I need to trust him. Right? Because that's what we do. We give away our common sense for nonsense by failed comedians wearing bow ties and lab coats. Right? You could not see Polaris at a light, you know, month away, a light year away, whatever. And they tell us it's 433 light years. That, 
That is the closest star. No, that is not the closest star. That's 433 light years. The closest star is four and a half light years. Hey, that's pretty close. 25 trillion miles that that translates to. Well, Dave, show me in a graphic what you think what we really are living on looks like. Please. I will. I, so I think that's a great, that's a good, good question. Um, let me, uh, let me think, but so let, let me, let me finish the last point. Last, last question, just on, on these numbers are, are making people's minds, um, you know, crack. And I, I don't mean to do that, but the closest star 25 trillion miles away. Do you know how far a trillion, how a trillion miles is 1 trillion miles. If you were traveling at a mile per second for a trillion seconds, you've gone one trillion miles. Okay, no one's ever gone a mile per second. So, <clears throat> do you know how long one trillion seconds is? Quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. Do you, want, do you want? Do you want to take a guess just for fun? How long is one trillion seconds? What in days? Yeah. In uh, you can go days, weeks, years, months. Take a guess. 20,000 years. Wow, you're, you're very close. 31,000 years. Okay, think about that. One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. And they're telling us that we're seeing stars, you know, trillions and trillions and quadrillions and six billions of miles away. Think about this. Light is like sound. It spreads out and it follows the inverse square law. It gets dimmer and dimmer exceedingly fast to the point where you can't see it. Okay. You can't take a picture of the flat earth because you can't see forever. But I think if you had like an outside view, this would kind of be where we are, you know, and what is this dome? I don't know. I think this is, uh, you know, the whole dome conversation. That's a two hour conversation. I think that we all, we live, that the sky is flat. There's a barrier above us. All right. And we're, we're within this bubble and we, we see what I call in a personal atmospheric dome. So if you're at the center here, this is your dome of vision. And everything in the sky appears on that dome of vision. Longer conversation. There's tons of videos in my app on it. Um, and once you start seeing the stuff, you get addicted and you want to learn more and more and more. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. And, and we'll take some questions in a wee minute. Why? Why Why are we being lied to then, if you think we're being lied to, Dave? What What purpose does it serve to just not tell people the truth? The shape of the earth does not matter, okay? It's not the shape. And by the way, flat is not a shape. Flat, flat is not a shape. Flat is a description of level and horizontal, okay? Um, so why would they lie about... Um, you know, about where we live. Why, why, why the lie? And the answer is so they can control you. If I put you, if I put um, a tiger in a fence that was 50, you know, 500 feet around, tiger's just going to pace. He wants out. Put him in a safari park that's 500 miles around. When he hits the fence, he's just going to turn around and go back into the park. He's not going to care. Put a human in there, make it 50,000 miles around. He sees the fence. He wants the other side of that fence. Put a human in a place where maybe there's some tyranny, and you say, well, you know what? I'm tired of this tyranny. I'm going to some other places where there isn't tyranny. If they knew if they're, but if you put them in a prison, as I showed you earlier, there's no other place to go, right? You're trapped on a ball floating through space where an asteroid could take you out. Fake doesn't exist. Where we're running out of oil. Fake, not true, right? Where we're, we're afraid of nuclear bombs. Fake, not true, right? Where we're, we're run, overpopulated. Not true. Every family in the world could have an acre in, in, uh, in Australia, and most of Australia would be empty, okay? It's everything that they do is to keep us in fear and make us give away our God-given rights to government. Govern is control, meant is the mind, right? They want us to willingly give them our God-given rights because they're not allowed to take it from us. So they've tricked us. They have us in this helio sinister trick, right? And they're, they're literally, here's the thing. Most people don't think this is real. That's how they, they get away with it. They literally so what, want your soul. They want your what, soul. Go so ahead. do you, you, you believe in, well, tell me if I'm wrong, that, that, that we are surrounded by the Arctic wall? Well, we're surrounded by the shoreline of Antarctica. Okay. What do okay. I, what do I mean by that? So the, you know, if you're, if you're on a big lake, a giant lake, a hundred miles around, 
right? And there's islands, everything. You could sail from island to island to island. Those are the countries. The North Pole would be at the center of the lake, so you can go east and west around that North Pole, circumnavigate the lake. It's a nice flat lake. But if you went away from the lake, uh, from the center, eventually you're going to hit the shoreline of the lake. And what happens when you hit the shoreline of the lake? Um, you don't fall off into space. You step up, up onto the higher land, right? So I'm going to go to the images section here. What if the world was set up like this? Let that load for a second. Um, what if the world was set up like, here it is, like this. What if we lived here, right? So we live in the center. This is what you're calling the Arctic Wall. It's a thousand miles or more, a couple thousand miles across, okay? All right? And beyond it, what if there was more land? What's another word for more? Extra. What's another word for land? Territory. What's a way to put those words together? Extra terra. If somebody lived out here in this outer area and they came to visit us in here, just thousands of miles away, not ridiculous light years, okay, they might be considered an extraterrestrial, extra terra, from the outer space right here. Now, this is scientifically possible. I'm not claiming it's real. I believe it's real, okay? Um, but it's scientifically possible versus the impossibility of a non-pressurized vacuum adjacent to a pressurized ball without a barrier, okay? What happens if you're um, in a spaceship and you open up the sunroof? You're dead if the spaceship was real. Boom. Well, how come space doesn't suck all the air off of the Earth? And, you know, the only thing you can say is gravity, but that's easily disproved, right? So here, this is what I showed you at the, oh, you know what? Let me show you something else. You're going to like this. You're going to like this, okay? Um, you're going to like this, All right? So recently, um, and those of you that are listening that know me, you know exactly what I'm going to pull up right now because it is a good one. Um, if I could remember how to spell, there it is. All right, so. This is a map. I'm going to show you a map that was discovered in a Buddhist temple. Um, it was discovered in a Buddhist temple, and it was published in a mag uh, newspaper in Hawaii in 1910, I think. And it showed, here we are, and it showed all of these other continents up there, 30, 40 other continents. Okay? Fascinating. Right? Google this. You're, Google's going to be like, oh, it's a cartoon. It's this. It's that. Of course, that's what they're going to say. Okay? So, so... While some guys were looking around, we were looking at, uh, for some reason, we're looking at a, a, a cargo ship tracking uh, site. And, you know, you can see where all the cargo ships in the world are. And you click on any one, it gives you all the information, cargo, where it's going, where it's coming from, captain, where it's registered, everything. But then they saw a cargo ship several hundred miles inside of the shoreline of Antarctica. Wait a minute. How did it get there? How did a cargo ship active on the GPS, ground positioning system, um, end up hundreds of miles. And recently they found some other ones like 500, 600, 700 miles inside of the shoreline. That makes no sense on a globe. Okay. So we click on this one and it said, uh, where is it from? It's from Kiribati. Have you ever heard of Kiribati? And that's all it said. It said it's 580 meters long, which is a massive ship and it's registered in Kiribati. It's all it said. You ever hear of Kiribati? I know I've heard the name. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, you know, it's because it's getting around. Look where it is. I had to put a pin on it. You can't even find it. In the middle of the South Pacific, here it is, okay? We zoom in, and it's a sandbar, okay? It, I mean, it's a little bigger than a sandbar, but um, it's a little tiny island, right, where all of this is uninhabited. Just over here is inhabited, in inhabited okay? So the U.S. and China say that Kiribati is a very, very important trade route. Very important trade route. It's a little sandbar. What, what are they trading? What are they going there? Picking up sand? What are they getting? They're getting fuel? Where are they getting the fuel? Like, why would you stop there to as a trade route? What what are you gonna get there? Okay? Is it human trafficking? Maybe that's another thing. And there's all sorts of stories coming out about Kiribati. Okay. One one funny thing on Kiribati, you know, you know of the story of Captain Cook and uh, his, him mm -hmm. trying to circumnavigate? Mm -hmm. He tried mm -hmm. to circumnavigate um Antarctica. It took him over three and a half years. He went over sixty eight thousand miles well it should only be a maximum of 12 or thirteen thousand miles on Kiribati, there's a captain cook hotel i know maybe someone's just a fan captain cook hotel on a sandbar that's a very important trade route that has ships in impossible places inside of the shoreline of antarctica what is going on there and then, and then there's so much more but <clears throat> excuse me so 
what if it is an important trade route? Here's Kiribati, and it's going out here to these other civilizations. Maybe they're trading computer chips. Maybe they're trading tuna fish. Maybe they're trading human beings. Maybe they're trading weapons. I don't know. But how would you know you wouldn't? James, you're, you're, here's, Dave, here's Dave, Dave. Dave. Sorry, I'm looking All in right. the chat. Dave, I'm, I'm, my brain, you're, 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 <laughs> I'm fried with it all. It's good, though. It's interesting. I, I like to hear things that are different. Right. Now, I, I believe COVID was a scam. I'm sure many in your community oh. will as well. Okay. But with COVID, we have had doctors, scientists, nurses have come out and spoken out against it. Why haven't more people, ex-NASA, ex-State Department, why haven't they come out and said that it is a lie about what we're told we're living on? Why are well, there no whistleblowers? Where are you getting your news, right? You see the, the BBC? All right, they're not going to report on it. <laughs> many, many have. Uh, Buzz Aldrin recently said on Conan O'Brien um, that, you know, the moon landings, you know, we, we didn't go, we didn't go. You know, the, no, he, he said um, he said that... Um, we, it, what, what you saw on the moon landings was animation, was animation. Then he told the little girl, he said, why are we going back to the moon? He said, because we never went, right? A Russian scientist recently came out, just featured that, that video, um, just I think just the other day. Uh, he said that we've never been to space and the Earth is flat, okay? There's men, and, then, uh, and he's dead. He died, by the way, after he said that, right? Weird, okay? There's, um, there's so many people coming up. Matter of fact, ne- this is an old interview with a NASA employee um, who uh, talked about how she realized it was all fake while she worked there. And that, that is going to be featured on the app um, next week. So when I say featured on the app, every day on my app, there's a new featured video. And this is the challenge I give people. Watch the featured video each day for two weeks. Just when you have your breakfast, you know, click that video and, uh, and watch the video. And after two weeks, if you think the Earth is a globe, um, go ahead and uh, hit me up. But um, you hit before you do, before and try to win the three of coins, you hit the question mark, and up will come the frequently asked questions. And your answer is probably here. But one of them, the reason I'm bringing that up right now, is um, what about um, all space agencies? Right there. What about all space, space agencies? Are they in on it? Lots of videos in there. Whistleblowers. Um, on how it's all coordinated and why they do it. So there's tons of information. Are all pilots and scientists in on it? Okay. Um, And you'll see many of them speak out. You know, all of the Qantas uh, airline pilots, they all know. They talk about it amongst themselves, but they tell us on the side that they can't talk about it publicly because they'll be grounded. So people are trapped in this, as I said earlier, we're trapped in this fake money system and those and positions where they could speak out, if they speak out, their entire life is ruined. They become homeless. So people are afraid. People, you know, people are very selfish. Me, I walked away from it all because I want people to know this because if enough people wake up, we just get to that tipping point. That's our freedom. We will never be free if we don't know where the hell we're standing. I mean, I think, I think in terms of the moon landings, I think a lot of people, including myself, are very sceptical of of that, basically. Nixon's phone call <laughs> where he just picked up the phone and started talking to them. Let, I mean, I, I, let me ask like, you a question. <laughs> in space, if I put you inside of this thing made out of tinfoil and paper mache and tape and, you know, and, and, and look at this, look at this sheet rocking job. I mean, it's horrible, right? If they did your basement and sheet rock like that, you, you would uh, ask for a refund. Could I put you in this and, and submerge it in a pool? Would you Would you be willing to go in there while I submerge that in a pool? No, but I think I think I think this is this is the thing. Like people have a skepticism of the official narrative. Yeah, they a lot of people don't believe the moon landings. A lot of people don't. But to take it to where you're taking it, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong, Dave, because I have not been in a position where I can definitively say i've seen the earth's curvature but uh, uh, okay then what about when you see a ship going down in the horizon what's going on there uh, thank you for asking that first let me show you this on the moon it's a very dusty the rocket engine for the is down here now this is when they were leaving the moon the orbiter is going two thousand miles an hour and it leaves the thruster down here so what does it just do <laughs> boom and throw it up now this thing's going to go and meet is they're going to meet and hook up 
Like, where's the thruster? What, and if it's yeah. thrusting in space, what's it pushing off of? None of it makes any sense. There's two guys in here standing. There's no seats. So if you moved over, wouldn't the thing start tumbling? You know, you ever go on a boat, like you're sitting on a boat. If you walk across the boat, the boat's going to start moving in the water. And that has some resistance. There's no resistance. This is ridiculous. So well, you just asked me, um, what was the question? The the oh, ship oh, oh. and the, the – because that was uh, – who was the – was that – um, was it Aristotle or Plato? Would they would did they not talk about the the ships and the the distance would disappear, and that was the first yeah. sign there was a curvature. How yeah, how yeah. do you overcome that? So so let me show you. So Question. this so we have a flat table here. I got a bottle cap on the table. I got a camera lined up, and when we look at the camera, I have you can see the bottle cap. So let me just zoom in here, and you can see the bottle cap. And now we're going to drag the bottle cap down. Now, this is a perfectly flat table. I'm not talking about water that has waves, which makes it 100 times worse. And we drag it down. And if you watch down here, it, it disappeared. So we're just going to zoom in. You look here. You cannot see the bottle cap. But when we zoom in, watch what happens. There comes the bottle cap. It just came up from the bottom up. What's going on there? So that's just on a countertop. Let's look at something uh, different. Here's a sailboat. So when you zoom in on something... When you look at clouds, you have a cloud deck. Your clouds are five or 10,000 feet over your head, but 20, 30 miles away, the clouds are touching the water because perspective just brings them all together. And where, where they touch, it's at your eye level. It's horizontal with your eye level, where the water and the clouds touch, where the water, water and the atmosphere all merge together. That's called your horizontal, not curved, your horizontal eye zone. Or eye zone. Okay? So... Let's take a look. So when we, we are consumer optics, like this camera right here, can zoom in. When you zoom in on something, you make its angular size bigger. And so you can see, because when something gets this angular size gets too small, um, you can't see it. So we look out here, and there is no boat, right? So we're, what we're doing when we're zooming in, we're, we're increasing the angular size, and we're raising it. And all of a sudden, we say, oh, look, there's a ship. There's a boat. Right? That boat was there the whole time, but you couldn't see it. Now, can my finger hide that boat? My finger's a little wave, and look, it is wavy. Oh, look, now it can hide the boat, and the boat disappears from the bottom up. It's an optical illusion, okay? The boat disappears from the bottom up. There will be a point where that boat gets so far away that you can't see it, that, that, that you can't bring it back in because of atmospheric um, – atmospheric density because of miraging there's a whole bunch of reasons but this just shows you right here that boats going over the horizon does not work it doesn't make any sense right so check this out this this boat here you got this mountain here when i zoom out what's going to happen okay when i zoom out you're not even gonna be able to see the mountain Okay, is it over the horizon or is it just out of your angular view? On this beach, sitting with the globe, he's going to say, oh, it's all below the, it's below the horizon. It's below the horizon. Let me just show you one more, okay? This one, this one is, a, is a really, really good one. Um, so if the Earth is a globe, right? Earth is a globe, there's physical curvature. So you can't see my mouth because it's behind a physical curvature. Zooming in isn't going to help because it's behind a physical curvature but on a flat earth it's a um it's it's a, an optical horizon and that's what i'm just showing you um showing you there so hold on a second there it is it's too far um so this is a spot in Alusia, france out here 175 miles away is mount canago can't see it because if the earth is a globe the top of mount canago should be over a half a mile below that physical curve well can't see it? Must be. Now, you don't see me right now. You see the light that's bouncing off of me, okay? The light that's bouncing off of Mount Canago isn't strong enough to push 175 miles through the soup of the atmosphere. The light of the sun is much brighter, okay? The light that's looking, that I'm looking at is much brighter than the light that's bouncing off my face. So as we talked about before, the sun migrates in between the two tropics, and twice a year it lines up with Alusia France and Mount Canago. And when it's lined up and it goes beyond it, all of a sudden it backlights it. And right here, the highest point of Mount Canago, that should be below the horizon over a half a mile. We can see the entire mountain. Okay? This shows 
doesn't prove the earth is flat. It proves that the earth is either over 1,000 times bigger than they're telling us, or it's flat. So do we have gravity then? Is there gravity? Thanks for asking. One of my favorite topics. <laughs> so if you talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson, he says, oh, I just dropped a microphone. Bam, there's gravity. Oh, well, that's buoyancy and density. Buoyancy and density are a real thing. Gravity is a made-up, fictitious force, right? And it doesn't work. So they had to make up dark matter and dark energy. 96% of um, gravity is made up dark matter and dark energy. Let me give you an example. Um, so it doesn't work, but they made that up and say, it's, uh, well, it has to work. Normally, when you have something that doesn't work 96%, you throw it out. But instead, they're just like, no, no, it has to work, so we'll just make something up. If I owed you $100, I said, let me pay you. I gave you $3. You go, well, where's the other 97? I'm like, oh, it's their dark dollars. Dark, dark, dark dollars. Don't worry. They're there. Just believe me. You'll never see them, but they're there. Okay? Not going to fly. Right? The sun and the moon are the cathode and the anode of the Earth battery system. The salt water carries the current. Maybe that's why there's tides in salt water and not in fresh water. And the land is the salt bridge. We live in this giant electrical system. Why does that matter? What does it have to do with gravity? I'm going to show you. So there is a measurable provable, not theoretical, downward flow of electricity from the positively charged sky to the neutral Earth. That's why everything is grounded. Everything seeks ground. That's why lightning goes down, okay? So you have this measurable flow, right? So when you're on the ground, you're attached to the neutral ground. But anything above the ground, I got this above the ground, it is now surrounded by a positive charge. And when I drop it, it says, hey, down is this way. And then buoyancy and density sort everything else out. Everything is sitting here. Everything. There's nothing on Earth that is not electrostatically charged. Everything is. Okay? And, and so, you know, if I had a handful of rocks and a ping pong balls and a helium balloon, I held them over a pool and I opened my hand, the helium balloon is going to go up because it's less dense than the air. The rocks and the ping pong balls are going to go down because they're more dense than the air. The ping pong balls will sit on top of the water because they're less dense than the water and the rocks will go to the bottom because they're more dense than the water. That's called buoyancy and density. But the downward bias is all of this downward energy. So how can we prove, um, how can we prove that? Like, okay, we know, we know that there is uh, this, um, you know, we know that static, uh, elect static electricity is a real thing. So how can we prove this downward bias? Well, we can, that's something we can manipulate. So for example, we have, um, this is, uh, we got some, leftover helium balloons and we got them tied we just have a little button taped on here and it's neutrally buoyant off the floor now that wire goes to what's called a van de graaff generator where we can add a charge to it so we're going to add a positive charge right positive charge added it goes down why is it going down did we make it heavier is gravity did we make the gravity stronger do we make the electrostatic charge stronger we added more electric positive charge to it so it went down, okay? Every heavier element in the periodic table has one extra a positive charge. So as you go up, it's more. each element is one, one electron more positively charged, and that's why it's heavier. That's why steel is at one end and, you know, um, helium is at the other end, okay? And so that, that's it. So, hey, we can make things heavier by make, adding a, a static charge. What, what about can we make things float if we add a negative charge? Okay, we had a negative charge here. It goes up. Now, are we defying gravity? Are we defying the proven, testable, repeatable, scientifically verifiable electrostatic charge? We're not defying gravity. We're defying the electrostatic charge of the Earth. Do you know that during lightning storms, um, things fall at different rates than they do when there's not an electrical storm? Hmm, that's interesting. That's interesting. There's uh, many times things you know like when lightning hits the ground like you ever see someone get hit by lightning they go flying in the air why did they go flying in the air but it, i mean the light they just got hit with electricity well i think it charges the ground positive for that split second and they're ejected because positive and positives will push apart they don't you know, positive and negative attract and then mit recently um came out with uh, their silent drone. Here it is. Second. Um, this is a drone, no moving parts, 
the, all they do is they change the electrostatic charge and it floats, makes no noise, maybe a little hum, at, at, if anything. Okay, no moving parts and it's flying. Is it defying gravity? Anybody with a common brain that doesn't defer to their lifelong programming from a bunch of Rockefeller funded, you know, teachers um, will say, no, this is electrostatics. This is proven. There's no more argument. There's no argument. There you go. And gravity is their God. They need gravity to hold the gra- to hold the ball together. Think about this. Our sun, it, you know, if you look at a real scale model of our solar system, it's so ridiculous, the distances. They did it in a desert. And, like you couldn't even see anything from any, from any, any planet from anywhere. But the sun is a burning ball of gas that holds on to all of the planets all the way out to Pluto and you know, Neptune. And, and it's holding on to all of them. But all of the, each planets are holding on to their own moons. Okay, and when our moon comes around our sun, around our Earth, towards the sun, wouldn't the sun just pull it away? And as it comes around, tries to get away from the sun, wouldn't the sun slow it down? Right? The sun's gravity ignores the moons. The sun's gravity just holds on to the planets. The planets hold on to the moons. The planets ignore the other planets. All of this gravity is just very selective in what it does. When you think about it, it's so stupid that you short circuit and you're like, I, I must not be smart enough, and you defer to authority. OK, and, and that's that's the problem of this world. People give up their God given common sense for complete and total nonsense. Right. Gravity is the biggest, dumbest lie ever. And once you understand that, um, you know, it, you have to drop your ego and go, you know, my whole life has been a lie. I got to retool. And once you do, um, life becomes really amazing. And Gravity. again, like uh, the, the the thing people are really asking is the why, and and you think the why is to keep people in the box of planet Earth, which is what they well, sell it, us. It, they say they sell us a lie that we live on planet Earth, so we can't go elsewhere. But then, what what why don't you and 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 others get together and and try and get over the wall? Is that not possible? Could you not hire a plane and and travel over to the other side? So 60 degrees south, you're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. They're in the, how are they going to stop me? Well, these are all military bases. Remember the Falkland War, right? This Falkland Island. Why, why are they fighting over that? Okay, these are military bases. And in between them, which is thousands and thousands of miles, there's, um, bu- there's, these, there's, these, um, there's buoys, uh, you know, radar buoys, um, that – if you cross them, you will be stopped. It's happened many times. Boats have been sunk. People have been put in jail. Um, no one is allowed to go to. Oops, what's going on there? All right, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, no one, no one is allowed to go there. And then the Antarctic Treaty. If you look at that. Um, where are we? The Antarctic Treaty is was uh, in nineteen late nineteen fifties. You know, Admiral Byrd went out there and said, um, uh, you know. There's uh there's more land bigger than the United States filled with resources no people no plants no animals just resources and they go okay nobody can go to Antarctica twelve countries signed the treaty and now all the countries in the world practically have signed it can't even question the treaty until the year 2041 okay no oil companies are petitioning to go there and and you know get these resources and it, it the reason they they say they can't is because um. Because they don't want to disturb the penguins in the ice, okay? It, it's absolute nonsense. I'm just trying to find the, the treaty here. Um, well, it, well I, uh, I guess you don't really need it. Where's my treaty? I've had it handy. So how far, um, how far, how, how far would it be then to get to the, to the shores, the Arctic shores? So the Antarctic Treaty basically says that um, you're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. That's like... A thousand or two thousand miles from Antarctica, you're not allowed to bring any extra fuel beyond there. Okay, and then if they let you go and you got there on your ship, let's say you had a two hundred foot ship, you get there, you got a two hundred foot plateau over you with no resources, no fuel, no food, no nothing, and they say it's pretty cold there. I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent true. Um, I think it gets warmer the farther out you go because you're getting towards other lands, but that's just me. Um, and, uh, you know, once you go there, uh, you here, that's what I was looking for. 
Once you go, I mean, you can't go there. They won't let you go there. And you know what? They say, oh, yes, you can. You can just file permits. It'll take you about a year or so or more to file the permits. It costs you, you know, it could cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars in permit fees. And then they'll turn you down and they keep your money. No one's going to Antarctica. And the ones that they do, you know, they'll let you go to the little area. You know, let's say you landed, uh, you know, they, they, let's say they gave you an area of Antarctica as big as England. Okay. What does that prove? That's just a tiny little fraction of the shoreline. Okay. What's beyond there is what matters. But I think it's actually a lot closer. I don't think they want anyone going even a couple hundred miles past the shoreline because. I think if you do, you might see some things that will prove you're not on a globe. And once that gets out, they lose control. If people knew that we weren't on this ball flying through space and all of these shortages and fears that they've put into us uh, are not true, people might be realize that we actually can be free and not slaves. You know, if you found out that they were hiding free energy, which I believe they are, um, and you could have like a th- something the size of a roll of coins that heats your house for a hundred years, air conditions your house for a hundred years and runs your car. Okay. Would you be pissed? Okay. Because what if you didn't have to pay for power or gas? That would kind of free up some time, free up some ingenuity. We'd actually, you'd be able to like, you know what? I can probably make a flying car with that kind of free energy, right? They've taken away airships. All right. They've taken away you know, what used to be here. There used to be worldwide travel freedom, right? I mean, go ahead. I mean, look, when you were talking about wanting to keep people in their cage, the the immediate thing I thought of are these 15-minute cities. Have you you heard of that, the the 15-minute cities? They don't want us going anywhere, right? Well, and and then there was the lockdowns as well. So, like, (sighs) there is an agenda to keep people local, to not have people talking about things. So I, 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 I get all that. But even for, I suppose, myself and many of our audience, y- y- what you're proposing is maybe just a step too far. But I I understand why the distrust and the, the thinking does come from. But no. Dave, you've obviously you've, you've you've got you've got an answer for everything. You're a, you're a, you're a wordsmith. I, I don't it's I, I don't it's have, fair no, to no, no, say. No, no. Th- th- so. I'm not a wordsmith. I have lots of answers because there <laughs> because there there actually are answers for the stuff. Here's the thing: I don't want the earth to be flat. I don't want to distrust government. It, that's not where this comes from. This comes from actually investigating. What's your number? So here's the thing: I'm going to point something out. You're in a cult, okay? I was in that cult too. It's called the Globe Cult, okay? It's a religion, okay? Well, well what do you mean it's a religion? We live on a globe. Give me one reason, one proof that you live on a globe. Just one, okay? And when you can't, then you have to admit you're in a religion of faith. One proof we live on a globe, and you win three Bitcoins, too. You're out of the cult. You're out of the religion. I'm an idiot, and you win three Bitcoins. One proof of the globe. You don't have one. Don't strain your brain. There are none. Someone made a good point, actually, and it did amaze me think about it. See, when a plane flies, why does a plane not have to dip accordingly to the curvature? It just flies in a straight line. Like, is that, that kind of backs up what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. So let me show you this. So there was a flight, a pilot um, from Germany. Let me find Germany. So Germany's up here somewhere, right? So we'll put Germany at the top of the ball. And... So the plane's sitting here, and when he looks across, his horizon is straight, straight, and straight in front of him, and so he sees stars on the horizon. Now he's going to fly down to to South America, and those stars are now above his head, right? Because there's stars over here. So if this this microphone is a star, as he flies down, now that star is over his head. That makes sense, right? Makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let me see if this is uh, okay. So here is, a, this is the flight, right? So we got these stars over here. They should be processing upwards and end up over his head, but they're just, you know, doing their, their slow rotation, right? But if we look on Google Earth, hey, what? show me what it looks like. These stars rotate up. Google Earth, the computer simulation, says this is what you should see. Everybody wants to believe Google Earth. 
They want to ignore reality. Reality says they that you sh- you know the reality shows that we're not we're just flying over a a, a plane air plane, not air globe. Right? Reality versus a computer simulation. Right? This is what you have to believe. You're flying over a spinning ball up and around. The ball's spinning and your nose diving down, flying upside down. That's not, that's insanity, okay? Once you understand that that is ridiculous, think about this, okay? The earth is spinning. So here's our origin and here's our destination, okay? The earth is spinning. So as a pilot flies this route, the earth, the, their destination is moving because the earth is spinning, Right, so he has to adjust, 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 keep adjusting, keep adjusting, and chase it until he finally lands. Right now, if he was smart, he's like, "Wait a minute, my target's over here. It's spinning. I'm going to calculate, and I'm just going to fly straight across here. And when I get over here, this red dot will meet me over there." Okay, that's what would happen on a rotating Earth if it could even be a thing, but that's not what happens. Airplanes fly straight and level to the to the to their destination. Let me, do we have a couple minutes to let me show you something else? Well, Dave, we, we've taken actually five minutes up of your time, but if you're prepared to right. stay on for another few minutes, I'm, I'm more than happy to. It's, it's, it's interesting me, stuff, so keep going. Yeah. All right. Please. So, so, yeah, and thank you. Um, so, when, uh, so here we go. We, got, we have our, our northern hemisphere and our southern hemisphere. And if you picked any two airports, any two random airports anywhere in the north, and you wanted to fly to them, never, ever would that plane cross the equator into the Southern Hemisphere to get to their northern location. You just go to your northern location, whatever northern location it is. And that's that's what you would think they would do, and that's what they all do. No flight orig- originating in the north and ending in the north ever goes into the south. Now, the same should be true in the south, right? Southern location, southern location. They should never go up to the north and then back down, okay? But that's not what happens, okay? Here's a, fl- here's a flight um, from Rio to Johannesburg. It stops in Sao Paulo. It goes on the globe. It goes all the way up here and then all the way back down, okay? Now, it's not stopping there to pick up passengers. It's stopping there because it's on the flight path. It's a straight line. It's a straight line. Let's look at another one. Well, and then I'm going to get rid of the, well, there's hubs there and the pilots have to change and that's nonsense. Okay. Right. Here's one um, from uh, Abu Dhabi to Auckland and it stops in Tokyo on a globe. It's kind of going way out of the way, but if you look at it on a flat earth, it's a straight line. Why is that, is that just a coincidence? Okay. Right. Remember the world cup recently in Doha? World Cup in Doha, private plane, no other passengers. They want to go back to Buenos Aires. They go to Rome first to get more fuel, and then they fly down. Well, why didn't they just go here? That, that leg looks like it's about the same. Maybe they want to go see the Pope. Okay? Well, look at it. Doha, more fuel in Rome because you can't get fuel in the middle of the ocean. Buenos Aires, a straight line. Okay? Private plane, no other passengers, no changing of pilots. They went for gas over here and never got any closer. Makes no sense. On a flat earth, it makes perfect sense. So let's take the idea of, well, it's flight routes, changing of passengers. Right? There's a thing called emergency landings, right? Sometimes somebody dies on a plane and um, they, have to, uh, they have to make an emergency landing. There's a book called 16 Emergency Landings. You can get it on lulu.com or you can just find the PDF online. Um, and it documented all these emergency landings. Let me show you a couple, okay? New York to Hawaii, emergency happened right here. They went like 1,500 miles out of the way to Seattle. They got there in 15 minutes. 500 miles an hour, 1,500 miles. That would take about three hours, but they got there in 15 minutes. How the heck is that possible? Flat Earth, New York, emergency, Land on Seattle. It's right there. You're flying right over it. Okay? Let's just say that's a coincidence. Let's look at another one. Right? Here's one with London. Okay? London to uh, Islamabad. Stopped in Moscow. Right? Right? From here to here. Emergency. Went way out of the way to Moscow. Got there impossibly fast. Moscow's right on that straight line. On a flat earth. Okay? Couple more. Okay? 
So here's one. Um, this one I like. This one, uh, this happened recently. New York to Auckland, New Zealand. Right here, they had an emergency. Well, they could have gone finished, but they went equally as far out of the way to Fiji. Okay? Why did they go out of Fiji when they were supposed to go there for this emergency? Right? Because New York, Fiji's right on the, on the line. Here's a zoom in. Fiji is right on their flight path. Okay? The flat earth map shows them where... By the way, no pilot brings a globe into the cockpit. They bring this flat earth map into the... This is what they use. It's called the Gleason's map. It's the one that's used for navigation. Right? And by the way, the FAA, um, they say on, on NASA too, not that anyone can believe NASA, and all of their testing of aircraft, they say they use a flat, non-rotating plane for their testing. A flat, not airplane. Uh, that flat non-rotating surface for their, uh, you know, for their, all of their testing. Um, why are they using a flat earth model to test their globe planes? Are they airplanes? Okay. They're, they're airplanes, right? And one more, this one is uh this one's a kicker. Um, this one. So there's a flight from Hong Kong. It was going all the way to London, but it stopped in Frank. Oh, that's not what I wanted to show you first. I blew it. I blew it. It's going from Hong Kong. It's supposed to go to London, but it stopped in Germany. Emergency. 12-hour flight. Four hours into the flight, um, a family's traveling together. Little kids, mother, father, are all sitting together. Mother dies suddenly. Weird. Weird, huh? 2023, people dying suddenly. Okay. And um, dead. You're, right. you're, you're sitting next to your dead mother. And uh, they're like, okay, we could land here, 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 here. There's 400 airports they could have landed at. Okay. But they flew for eight hours and finally landed in Germany. At that point, why didn't they just fly the other hour to get, get over to the UK, all right, or whatever, whatever. They landed. So why, why didn't they land? And the answer is because here's the flight on a flat earth. They were over Russia. Can't land in Russia because Russia might be the good guys and say, oh, please let us help. And that could, ins- that could cause peace. We don't want that. And uh, the other question is why the hell are we flying over Russia? They're flying over Russia because that's the flight route. It's a straight line over Russia. Planes fly over Russia all the time. People don't think that, you know, that we fly over other countries. We fly everywhere, everywhere where you can fly. We don't fly over Antarctica because it doesn't exist as explained. Okay. This is not a step too far. This is reality saying that this is too far. I don't believe it. I live on a globe and not being able to come up with a single reason why you believe this cultish belief. Um, that's a religion. Sorry. <laughs> Dave, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. You can't I've, argue with me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to argue with you. Don't argue. I, I, I want to give you three bitcoins. Give me one reason that you think you live on a globe. Just one. Can you give me one before we go? Just one. I just need one. Come one on. One good reasons, Will. One good, well, no, one reason that you, that the Earth is a globe. Just one. Please don't say pictures. Well, Please. no, because of course you can you can you can CGI these pictures. I you can, can prove to you. I mean, we can get can, into that. So, everybody. I just think. Flatter. I think. I think. I think you 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 have given a you have given a an analysis. I think others give an analysis of well, and 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 for me. It would be based on the overwhelming consensus towards that, and the fact the that whilst consensus. whilst you may whilst you may be correct, my spider senses kind of tingle in that more people, and you say they have okay, maybe they have and I haven't researched it properly, but it it still remains a a fringe movement. That it's not even, a even, 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 even die hard people who question, who go down rabbit holes, people will question COVID, they'll question vaccines, they'll question these things, they'll question historical events, the, the, the numbers that you're told, they'll question yeah. proper people. But even, even for that, it is just a step too far. And that's, a that's, step- that, that would be why I would err. On on that, but you could argue it's, that's the tyranny of the majority of of. I mean, of come on, views. You're, you're you're aware that the thing that we're supposed to stick in our arm is nonsense, right? I'm saying that because I want to put this on YouTube. Okay, 
But the majority of the world doesn't think so. So therefore, you're wrong, and you've taken a step too yeah, far. Yeah, no, but the, 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 the majority hold don't. On, but a, a sizable, a sizable minority, a sizable minority hold doesn't. On. Much, much larger okay. than those so, who subscribe to, to flat hold Earth. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. The um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. It was a good, good point. It was um. You you believe? Oh, well, I had a great point, and now it now it's space me. But let me <laughs> let me let me. It'll come to me in a second. So the um, they're oh, they're they're telling everybody, you know, you got to do. Oh yeah, that's it. There's two th- all the countries in the world are supposedly fighting with each other, okay? But they all agree on two things. Two things they all agree on unanimously. Nobody can explore Antarctica, and nobody can. Uh, everybody has to get this thing stuck in their arm, okay? That should raise some eyebrows. When we talk about a minority, do you see what the – can you even see the UK? This is a fraction of the people that are flat earthers. This is on my app. It's called the Friend Finder. These are the other flat earthers. Look at the UK, right? This is insane, right? This is only a small fraction of the people that are waking up to flat earth. Look at the UK. I mean the UK, the USA. Um, the, so, so talk about fringe. It's not fringe. I mean they did a survey a couple of years ago in Brazil and um, – there was over 11 million people thought the earth was flat, okay, in the little country of Brazil, right? So when you say this is a fringe thing, it's not, okay? This is only wow. less than 1% of the flat earthers showing up on this map, all right? So, you know, you're saying it's fringe. You're saying I've taken a step too far. Where's your globe proof? Other than I need to believe it to maintain my uh, mental sanity, okay? Because that's insane. Listen, Dave, you, 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 you put up a very good argument and you do it in a very passionate and thorough way. And, and that really is all that matters. And at UNN, what we do is we, we are a platform for different views and, and debate and ideas. I, Dave, where, where is the best place for people to keep in touch if people want to support your work or learn yeah. more? Is it your website? I've been putting the link in on the yeah. chat. Is that the best Flat- place to go? FlatEarthDave.com. Everything can be found there. If you have a show and you want me to come on, hit book Flat Earth Dave. If you want to take the the, the Flat Earth um, crash course, go scroll down to that, hit that. There's a list of videos. Watch the first three. You're Flat Earther. But just don't watch them if you're not ready to lose some friends and family and get into some arguments. Okay? Just check that out or get the app. The app is $3. You have it for life. It has the frequently asked questions. It has all those images. It has so much to it. It has the friend finder. Because when you become a Flat Earther, you realize... You don't want to really hang out with non-flat earthers. So you can find all the other ones around you. You can message them. You can have groups. You can do video calls. You can do everything on it. The app is uh, becoming a social media um, social media um, place to be. And every blue dot on there is uh, has more in common with you if you're a flat earther than any dating site could ever. So it's used as a dating site, as a job site, as a friend finder, as a companion maker, as a meetup uh, you know, for meetups. We did a, a radius broadcast, uh, 50 kilometers, 100 people, not 100, 75 people showed up at our, um, at our meetup a couple of weeks ago. It was a great time. So flatearthdave.com, the app's $3. If you want to use the messaging part, though, be, um, it's $11 a year, okay? Not a big price to pay, but you don't even have to do that. If you just refer the app to 11 people, you get the subscription for free, okay? So... Super fun, flatearthdave.com. It's called the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Just click the link on the website. Easier to remember than the ridiculous name that it's named, flatearthdave.com. It's all there. Dave, listen, an absolute pleasure, sir, and we will remember this for many years to come in the annals of UNN history. Um, Enjoy the rest of your day um, across the pond, David. All right, sir, thanks so much for coming on. All right, thanks for having me. See ya. Good night, bye-bye. Can we all get some um, Ds for Dave in the chat, please? Let's get some Ds for Dave's in the chat. Please go and and visit the the website and and see what he's going to say. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to you guys. Okay, let's let's be democratic about it. One, you believe um, David Weiss and his opinions, or two, you believe. The, the world is flat. So let's 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 do this democratically. Let's hear what you guys have to say. So one, you believe in, in, in what David said tonight, or two, you you would err on a a round earth theory. So let's see how the chat is. Quite a few ones coming in. Quite a few ones, twos, 
twos, ones, ones, two, 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 ones. So look, quite, quite a, a diverse audience there. Um, people thinking things, um, mostly ones. I don't know whether it's the, the people there, but yeah, interesting stuff. Guys, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about Ukraine tonight. I'll probably do that tomorrow. It's been such an interesting chat. I think, um, um, I have a lot to think about. I like to have my, my, my mind expanded. I'm sure you do too. So I think, um, again, very interesting stuff. Very interesting. And I think having, I keep maintaining having a healthy suspicion of the official narrative is helpful whether that takes you to be at a place where dave is whether it like this is where again i'm i'm open-minded to your average normie i am a nut job okay i'm an anti vaxxer i don't trust the science i don't believe in so i'm i'm a nutcase so who would i be to then judge Dave, to 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 see what he has to say. I remain unconvinced by the flat Earth argument. Okay, that's just my take on it. I I remain unconvinced. I think, as as I say, my 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 way of looking at it is that. Someone asked, do I believe in fairies? Well, Philip Schofield's real. Um, there would just be a wider move and, and a wider movement towards that. So, I I like, I like mean sceptical, I think things are, but my other take is there's always a level of truth in, in, in certain... <laughs> in certain things we fat shug says globe is simply nonsense i'm afraid well i think until we can fundamentally disprove it <sighs> some people might say this is moral relativism but i think a lot of this is pretty harmless isn't it um this kind of discussion, but they'll argue it's a, it's, it's a gateway drug. Some people say it's a false dichotomy. Um, I'm not really into lesbians, um, if I'm being honest. Graham F says, loony, <laughs> lol. It was interesting. Guys, absolutely brilliant stuff. Really enjoyed that. UNN is the place to be. Please, if you can, chip in, become a regular supporter, keep us going. I'll be live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as usual. Big show tomorrow with Sue and Steve. Mariana Spring was out trying to catch out Darren from the Light newspaper. So that should be very, very, very interesting. So I will speak to you all later. Good night. Bye-bye. Are you a blue dot? Those questioning where we live are not just here. They are everywhere. Of course this info is hidden from you, but the app shows you that no matter where you go, you aren't alone. We are everywhere, and we are growing. Find your tribe today.